All right. So, <clears throat> here we go. So, all right, first off, taking the screws out already. But <clears throat> we've got one, two, three, four screws, which what I recommend, take them out, put them right back in, because I've already lost one. One, two, three, laundry's done. Get that later. Also, don't turn these. Don't know what they do, but they're potentiometers and probably change the speed or something. So first off, I already see we have corrosion here, which I believe I already saw in the battery compartment a little bit, but it's not damaging anything. It doesn't look like. So this is very tricky. You gotta kind of wiggle it, but you'll you'll notice. Okay, so you'll notice that this will be pretty stuck in there like that. So you need to lift directly up, and this is gonna catch on everything. And then watch these wires here, and this needs to go under as you can see and then I'm gonna bend it over and just lay it there so this tape is very crucial so leave it there um, yeah yep so this makes it a little more difficult to work with but it's better to leave it there than like how to move these wires around and pull something out or something like that so <clears throat> all right so step next is i have all these belts which some of these are square so i'm not sure these are square or not probably replace this one anyway even though it looks okay all right so next step is there used to be a belt here but it was so gummed up that I wanted to make sure I got it out immediately. Because these things literally do, it's like, uh, it's a mess. It's a literal mess. So under here, you're probably going to have some gunk. I hope you can see this all right. Right under there. You'll see some gunk here. Um, it gets stuck under, because the belt's not supposed to go under here, but it gets stuck under there anyway because when this gums up, it just literally gets everywhere. So if you ever see a gummy belt, go ahead and take it out. Um, and make sure you try to get everything out at once, unlike what I did, because then you're getting your tools dirty more than you need to. Because yeah, you don't want to use these tools dirty like this, they'll mess it up end up getting stuck other places and you're a mess. So I think I got, nope. So make sure your tips are, tips are tips. Okay, so I think I got everything out. Just get a brush in there, honestly. But anyway, let's replace this belt. So, <clears throat> all these different sizes here. The, I think these are gonna be too thick. Like, gosh, that's very, very tight. Um, you can't just like really order a belt specifically for this. So basically the way that the belt goes in is you wanna bring it around here now, I don't even know if this belt's going to fit, but I'm just going to set it there and then figure out that this is way too long. So, yeah, not it. Okay, so smaller than that. And I feel like these are too thick. Because believe it or not, the size of belt you use actually can matter. 
Now, I'm not an expert on these specific recorders. I swear, maybe. Okay, now I shouldn't be using metal tweezers with this, but don't have anything else on hand at the moment. So also, if you're putting a belt on, this is a good method to grab it, bring it over one side, like this, and then just, and just slide the tip around. So grab it here, and then you just slide the tip right around the wheel. Now when you have a little blocker there, that's not going to work because the walls were right there. So fail on that. Oh yeah. So this seems a little tight and it seems like way too big. Like, oh, actually I don't like the way that feels. Let me pull that. All right, so looks like this belt's all right, but I don't even think I have another. Yeah, these are all the same size. <clears throat> Alright, well, we're going to keep that belt like it is because I don't have one that size. Yeah, these are all too, way too thick. You don't want to use too thick of a, because it'll just, it'll pop off the wheel if it's too thick. Also, if it wants a rounded and you put a square in there, it can also pop off pretty easily. So, basically now, I need... Okay, so this battery terminal should be, like, honestly fine to just test it. So, let's get this closed up. I'm not going to put all the screws back in yet. Also, getting this back in can be tricky because of this little, this top part. So, if you want to grab this top part, slide it in as you bring everything else. To, oh, I should have, I should have told you. So, there's buttons, there's switches. So this corresponds to this. Oh, you can't even see that. Okay, so this switch falls in to here, which this which is the mechanism for this control. So this is moving this when you move it up and down. Um, this will basically put it in, I think, record mode. Yeah, yep, uh, so cool. So just so you know that, as well as this. This is going to attach somewhere in here, so just make sure, yeah, it actually attaches onto, I think, this little piece. I don't know what it does. It's probably just something to tell the circuitry where the mechanism is or something. So let's bring it back down here. Make sure everything's lining up. Double check that switch there. Shouldn't be too much resistance, so get resistance. Hold up, perfect. So it should just pop right in. Um, and I like this because it it shows that, so you know if it's moving as well. Let's see what we can do. Let's get some batteries up in this situation. Follow directions, children. Okay, so minus plus, we're looking at triple A's. Um, hmm. When in doubt, TI's always got you. Always got you. When in need. No, no. Throw back in there. Thank you, ma'am. Ready? All right. We're about to see some stuff. Ready? That starts turning. Oh. Oh. Oh, wait. Is that play? Ah! 
Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, it keeps stopping. Yep. The uh, belt's too big. Uh, I don't know, actually. I think it just needed to get put into position. This is dope. This is dope. Look. Ready? This works. Dope. Ain't that lit. Nice. Little, little one-band VU meter there. Nice. Nice. Now I just get me a... Oh, the counter gets stuck. Actually, let's check that out. Let's see, it gets stuck, I think, at like five. No? No? Nope. I mean, we're... We're... We're good, bruh. Oh. I guess it knows if it... Oh, no. Oh, it's getting getting stuck so I think what's happening is the I think what's happening is the belt is slightly too big so it might be getting stuck around things yeah I think I need to give this a nice clean with some ISO and then get a tape in here yeah it's too thick as well it's not doesn't have enough power to get it also, these batteries are dead. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. I'd use half dead batteries in my calculator. All right, so, sweet. Looks like we're good on this. So that is replacing a belt in the BM540. Um, wanted to make this video because it doesn't seem like there's anyone else out there doing a video on replacing the belt in the specific cam, this specific micro cassette recorder. So last little thing, when you <clears throat> put this back on, A, make sure this, this right here, this, this little switch is secure as well as this switch. This one that says S201 on it right there that needs to be at the same position that this is so if it's all the way to the left it needs to be at high and to the right respectively as well so cool so now remember what you did take your screws out of here this back on put those get rid of that corrosion because that actually will end up causing issues if you don't get rid of that so i personally like to always use vinegar just a little bit some people use isopropyl if it works you don't put vinegar i just like to use a tiny bit of vinegar anyway because it doesn't seem to cause any other issues so but anyway yeah so this is um this was a video on getting this thing up and running um actually nope that seems to be working fine yeah so here it was i actually haven't tested the the volume or anything like that but it's not what we're doing here we are just replacing the belt <clears throat> which as you can see is pretty easy you can get a manual online it's free um first two pages will tell you just about everything you need to know to replace the uh to replace the I should have printed this out actually it would have been helpful but yeah i mean it'll show you like the the flywheel diagram and it'll show you exactly where the belt goes for the most part um but of course i just showed you as well so it shouldn't be too difficult this is a very easy repair guys just be very careful of all these parts because like i mean like this wire is just soldered to a, a chip which i mean that's probably a voltage regulator honestly but it's yeah they're just there's wires everywhere. Um, so just be careful of these. That's all I have to say. As well as don't turn these. Because I think that has to do with speed. And if you turn those, it's going to change what speed it is at each one of these settings. 1.2 centimeters or 2.4. And you don't want that. I mean, you're going you're gonna to have very weird sounding audio. And it'll be hard to get it back to a factory. So 
Um, I wouldn't be surprised if those were like locked, but they might not be, so be careful. Anywho, hope y'all have a wonderful day. Um, I'm going to give you a close-up of these chips if you want to look at them. Um, they're pretty... They're probably pretty standard for the time. I wouldn't... I don't know. I mean, Sony be, be making some pretty cool stuff, but you never know. There it is. All right. You all have a wonderful day. And remember, stay lit.